Over the past few months, the trend of swatting has picked up a lot of steam on the internet, in which somebody prank calls a 911 center with a bomb threat in the hopes of having a SWAT team deployed on a live streamer's house. Now I know everybody knows that this is a bad thing, but some don't realize how extremely dangerous it actually is. But is there any way we could stop it? On August 27, 2014, a YouTuber known online as Kutra was live streaming a game of Counter Strike on Twitch when someone decided to call 911 claiming that there was a terrorist attack taking place in the building Kutra's live stream was taking place. Soon after the call, Kutra was thrown to the ground and arrested in front of his online viewers for the world to see, causing a huge amount of commotion throughout his office building and the internet. This was just one of many swattings that has taken place in recent times, with the new focus being on live streams so that the raids can be broadcasted to everyone on the internet. The fact is, swatting is a federal offense that can land you years in prison, but because of how easy it is to do, the punishment doesn't seem to curb the amount of calls. In fact, with a fake Skype account and a little bit of know-how, anyone can make a bomb threat with a strong chance that they'll never be discovered. While at face value, one of these attacks may only seem to result in a ruined day of a live streamer, the consequences for one of these prank calls is much more severe. First of all, the financial cost for a SWAT team and all the other expenses as a result are incredibly high. It has been reported that having a SWAT team sent to knock down a door can end up costing up to $10,000, but this is only a minor problem in comparison to the much bigger dangers of having a SWAT team deployed to your home. Many police departments across the United States are acquiring military-grade weapons and gear through federal funding, with much of these items coming in the form of gear used in no-knock raids. Because of this, many departments have been using SWAT teams where they most likely wouldn't have years ago. So much so, in fact, that in the past 30 years, the use of SWAT teams has gone up by 4,000%, even though crime has gone down in the same time period. These raids are so scary because things frequently take a turn for the worse during them. Take for example a police no-knock raid that happened in May of 2014. When the police entered the residence, one officer threw a military stun grenade into the crib of a sleeping toddler, putting the child in serious condition and a medical-induced coma. No drugs or weapons were found in that house. But humans are not the only victim during these raids, but also the family pet. That's right, no matter what the crime is, it is protocol for officers to shoot dogs on sight during a no-knock raid, with no repercussions even if the homeowner ends up being innocent. So if a SWAT team is deployed to your house because of a single fake 911 call, say goodbye to your four-legged friend. Now you may say that this will never happen to you, which is hopefully true. But the fact that any computer-savvy person can cause any individual's door to be knocked down, then their dog to be shot, then be thrown to the ground and arrested with a single prank call should be very unsettling. After hearing the facts, many may ask how can we stop these swattings from happening? And well, honestly, I don't have an answer to that question. We live in a world where people can completely hide themselves in the internet, without even being brought to court over their wrongdoings. So the idea that we are going to catch every person who makes a fake 911 call is simply naive. The best we can do at this time is try not to overreact to possible prank calls that can be effectively handled in more peaceful ways. The cost and dangers of a SWAT team being deployed off an anonymous hunch are in most cases much worse than the chances of there actually being terrorist activities taking place at random residential homes. But on the other hand, authorities can't take these situations lightly, and I completely understand that. All I'm trying to get at is that it may not be the best idea to shoot dogs or throw flash grenades into homes possibly inhabited by children, all because you received a random text message from an IP address in China saying that there's a bomb threat in a random house. But hey, that's just me. So those are just a few of my personal thoughts on the trend of swatting, and if you have any of your own, please feel free to leave a comment below. So until next time, thanks for watching.